The Gig Harbor Tides and the West Valley Rams face off to determine the 1996 Washington State AA basketball champion. John Horton along with Ryan Drew, we are ready to get underway. West Valley in their home white with light blue numbers. Gig Harbor. You've been hoping for those home uniforms for West Valley and they for a day. much easier to read than the visiting uniforms. <laughs> West Valley, according to Quirky Freddy, our tournament director, has never quite understood why the West Valley numbers are the way they are. Maybe to keep scouts from getting good videotape on them, possibly. <laughs> we are underway. Gig Harbor to control the ball to open play. And right, boom. Justin Bennett working with Brian Keel to get things underway. Keel scores the first two points of the game. I'll tell you what, Keel, watch him. He takes it up real strong here. He locates the defense, finishes. Look at his head. It's up the whole time. Get excited, boy. Brian Keel, a 46% free throw shooter, rims the first. And West Valley gets their first opportunity. Jeremy Johnson will run the show. There's Ryan Allen who loves that wing position. Kevin Cure up on top. West Valley's gonna be real patient. Johnson with a pump, rebound ripped down by McLaughlin. There's one of the keys right there for Gig Harbor. If they want to play, if they want to be consistently tough in this game, they're going to have to keep Brian McLaughlin off the glass because he's an animal. McLaughlin tried the pass to Johnson, knocked away by John Grobens. And West Valley will retain possession. No shot clock in the boys' game. Backcourt violation back into effect. Shot blocked beautifully by Justin Bennett. Bennett's a quick jumper. McLaughlin's going to have to take that in consideration when he's going to take a jumper in his face. In the corner, it's Keel. Up top to Shull. This is Mike Schmidt. Schmidt tried the spin move. Kind of a lazy pass back to Shull. I think he expected Shull to come towards the ball. Grobens drives baseline. High arcing shot will not go. Reeled in by Jeremy Johnson, bringing it down. Johnson thought about stopping and popping, but gives it off to Ryan Allen. O'Connor 15 out. Johnson drives baseline, kicks it up top for Kevin Cure. I Looping pass into Ryan Allen. We've seen more movement here with West Valley than we saw the entire game against O'Day. They really look active. They're looking to score right away. Nice save. Nice hustle by Nathan O'Connor, but it's into the hands of the Gig Harbor tie. Show dish, baseline, move, good by Keel. Four points for Brian Keel, 4 0. Early in action. He's their leading scorer. He's going to take it from a number of positions on the court. He's a very good slasher. Kevin Cure looking inside, trying to dump it into O'Connor. Forced that pass, and Brian Keel was there to take it away. Show with a crossover dribble over to John Grobens. To the top for Schmidt. Back to Grobens. Trying to get it inside to Bennett. Instead, they'll work it around where Show will have it. Driving in as Schmidt kicks it out to the big guy. Justin Bennett with a nice line jumper for two. And Gig Harbor is coming out on fire. Well, I'll tell you what, Bennett, even though he is the tallest player on the floor for Gig Harbor, you're rarely going to see him take a lot of shots inside the key. He likes to take shots from everywhere, not afraid to shoot. Bennett, 13 of 38 on the tournament. Around and out for Kevin Cure. Gig Harbor dominating on the boards. Scholl will bring it down. Grobens finds Keel inside. Schmidt will hold it up. Nice inside out play right there. Keel got the ball inside, realized he did not have an angle, and dropped it right back out. Fight for the rebound, won by Nathan O'Connor. The Rams push it up the floor. Allen to McLaughlin, and swatted away by Justin Bennett. You can see McLaughlin hesitated right there, which gave Bennett enough time to come right back into the play. Nice pass by Allen. McLaughlin just hesitates a little bit. Bennett says, get it out, big man. 
On the inbounds, the turnover, almost converted by Mike Schmidt. And now on the counterattack, here they, comes Ryan Allen. They got numbers. Bounce pass through. Jeremy Johnson didn't see the open shot, so he holds it up. This is O'Connor to the high post for McLaughlin. Ryan Allen averaging 9.3 points per game. He'll run the show. That last fast break opportunity, West Valley had numbers. They got to capitalize in those positions. McLaughlin forced the shot, but it goes for the first two West Valley points of the night. 6-2, about halfway through the first quarter. Brian Keel around to show at the wing. West Valley doesn't look very active in defense right now, John. They, they're they're kind of sitting back. They're not really coming out on it. John, Gro see. John Grovins for the three-point shot. It's good. 9-2. Gig Harbor. That's a good example right there of the inactivity on defense. Trying to answer is Ryan Allen. Nice hustle by Kevin Cure on the rebound. This is McLaughlin to O'Connor. The two big men will come out to the high post. Jeremy Johnson tries for three. Reeled in by McLaughlin, who tried to get the baseline pass. Tapped out by, I believe, John Grovins. And we'll see our first substitutions for Lyle McIntosh's squad. Now, this is a smart play by, uh, by Coach McIntosh. He's going to get those guys in, get them a quick breather. One of the things in a championship game that you'll find, players go in and they'll spend all their energy early. Give them a nice breather, let them come back solid. We'll spot up the players as we get the opportunity. This is Ryan Allen running the show. John Everett now playing the low post, and the five-second violation will turn the ball over. That timeline's still in effect in high school basketball. Bob Rose and Paul Henderson, the officials, calling this championship matchup in the boys' double-A division. Scholl drives in. I believe that possibly either Ebert or O'Connor got their hand on it. This is Cure working against Sam Scholl for West Valley. O'Connor up top, Allen fires but misses. And Justin Bennett is there for the rebound. Gig Harbor's gonna get a hand in the face of every shot. Right there, Ryan Allen, or Brian Allen went up with the shot and uh, was, was not able to, uh, to get it off. Plus, Gig Harbor was right in his, right in his face. Three-point bucket by Matt Gardner, who's come in off the bench. He and Max Handgardner, number 20, provided extra firepower for the Gig Harbor Tides. And Handgardner hits the three for a 12-2 Gig Harbor lead. West Valley calls timeout. We did not expect Gig Harbor to just jump out to a lead as disciplined as West Valley was last night against O'Day. They seemed almost a little bit intimidated by Gig Harbor. Well, I think Gig Harbor is very active, number one, on offense. We're about to see this three-pointer right here. Just about loses the ball, desperation pass. Scholl moves it real well, and Handgardner buries it. But one thing Gig Harbor is doing right now is they're really putting the pressure on offense. They're coming down, they're getting into their offense before West, West Valley has a chance to set up. West Valley being a slow down type offensive team, they're not gonna be used to the, uh, they're not gonna be used to the offensive speed up. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens here when they're, when they're supposed to rush. How successful has the tournament been this year? We had an opportunity to talk to the tournament director, Corky Frady. This tournament's been very successful. Uh, last night, uh, Friday night semis, I can't remember uh, uh, ever a semi as competitive and as good as last night was. Uh, three games uh, right to the buzzer, two overtime, one final shot. Uh, it was exciting. Uh, the level might not be where it is uh, competitive-wise, but uh, uh, this, this has been uh, probably, from our standpoint, one of the best tournaments we've ever had. West Valley with control of the basketball as we return to action here in the first quarter. About 1.46 to go and Ryan Allen shot off the mark. I'll tell you what, Gig Harper is very active in that zone defense. It's really a matchup zone. Matt 
Gardner tries for the long two. Long rebound out to Jeremy Johnson. Great Quick look. touch pass. Beautiful play, but they can't connect. John Everett just couldn't get the ball into the bucket. Boy, you hate to miss those kind of shots. Those are freebies. So Gig Harbor with an opportunity up by 10 with just about a minute to go. Scholl over to Hand Gardner to Mike Schmidt. Matt Gardner for three and it goes. Two trays for the junior guard, 15 to two, tied. West Valley struggling, but can't get it to go. Nice long rebound taken in by Allen. Long three attempt by Cure. It won't go and boxing out very well. Matt Gardner for the tie. Well, Matt Gardner's come in and given some real solid minutes here in the first quarter. West Valley, the tallest team in the semifinals. But I'd, the Tides are really working the box out. I'd say Gardner's got the uh, green light to shoot that three. Tries to short shot, it won't go. Foul underneath the basket. And I think it'll be whistled against West Valley. Good pump fake right there by Matt Gardner. Looked like he got him with the body a little bit. Hank Gardner comes in. That just looks like a mess to me. Quite a few substitutions for each team. A lot more substitutions than we saw in the girls game because I think it's just such a, a much faster paced game than the girls game was that these guys actually kind of wear themselves out. Oh, I think so. I, I agree. You can see right there the three-point shooting. Definite advantage to uh, the Dick Harbor. The, <laughs> the tides. The tide is in. Allen tries, it won't go, but a foul on the rebound. Brian McLaughlin will draw it. And the foul will go against Gig Harbor's Mike Schmidt. We see Allen go up with the shot right there. McLaughlin, who's around every rebound. Schmidt just comes over his back, a little too aggressive. That's one thing you see is a guy, if he's over aggressive, he's gonna get called for the foul. What a first quarter for Gig Harbor. 15 to two. The tide is rolling on Prime Sports. Welcome back to the Tacoma Dome. John Horton and Ryan Drew and the Gig Harbor Tides indeed have control of this one after one quarter of play, 15 to two. West Valley with control of the ball to open up the corner. And Brian McLaughlin able to score two points faster than they did in the first quarter. Well, that's where they need to get him the ball. Brian McLaughlin so tough inside about 10 feet. If they can look for him down low, get him some early shots. It might help everybody else get rolling. Long three-pointer by Max Hangardner. Do the Tides like the long shot? You better believe it. Well, they're taking their few, they're taking their fair share of them. 18 to four, the Tides with a lead. West Valley's defense is good enough to get them back into this game. The question is, can the offense come to the front? If they get the ball into Brian McLaughlin like that, I think they'll be able to get back into it. They're not many possessions down. They need a couple stops on defense. It's a 12-point game now with 7-0, excuse me, clock rolling at 6.58. Haven't seen a lot out of Sam Scholl right now. He's really doing a nice job of getting everybody else involved. He can score and will. Gardner works it up top for Scholl. He likes to penetrate and kick it out. But Scholl did not kick it out last night. He put in the bucket to send it to overtime in one of the most dramatic moments that this double-A championship has seen in years. This is Max Handgardner. The Tide's just rolling it around, and a three-point bucket by Sam Scholl nails it. 21-6. There's no better thing as a player than to have a coach like Lyle McIntosh who really promotes the three. He's not going to pull guys out when they miss a few, so they've got the confidence to take it. You saw Matt Gardner. He came in, took four right away. Brian
Brian Cowden gets run over by Sam Scholl. Scholl will be called for the foul. Only the third foul on Gig Harbor. First on Sam Scholl. Scholl hit the lay-in and watch the three. That's NBA. He can hit that one. No matter where that line is, he can hit that. Well, we certainly know that these guys are going to take that shot. Now, whether they can consistently continue to hit these, I don't know. We were talking about the dotted line that signifies the high school three-point arc and whether that would be confusing as to the three and two. That one's good for three. There's an example Jeremy Johnson. Right there. His feet were awfully close to that line. Now, if he's in between the perforations, it's difficult for the official to tell. What I was about to mention, Gig Harbor may be playing it safe by going for the NBA <laughs> arc. They know that's a three. Ken Gardner inside to Keel. Long three off the mark by Sam Scholl. And a foul over the back call. That'll go against Brian Keel. Dick Harbor is so active on both sides of the floor that I think West Seattle, Seattle or West Valley really has not had an opportunity to adjust to what they're doing right now. Han Gardner actually tapped with a foul. That's his first team foul number three. Gig Harbor's putting the kind of pressure on West Valley right now that O'Day was not able to put on him early. Double clutch shot goes to the bottom of the net for Ryan Allen. His first two points of the night. Remember, he did not have a shot from the floor that went in. Six misses. The seventh one was the one that counted. That was the game winner last night. Well, I'll tell you, as McLaughlin goes, so do West Valley. They need to get him off early. Jeremy Johnson's done a nice job of looking for him early, but if he and Allen can get, get rolling, they're going to stay in this by halftime. Ball stolen away as West Valley finally taking advantage of a miscue. Jeremy Johnson brings it down. Three-point attempt off the mark by Brandon Taggart. Nice save by Ryan Cowden on the far side. Long shot by Allen. Bounces once, twice, comes out, and skying for the rebound, Max Hamgardner. Sam Scholl pushes it up, finds an open. Matt Garner kicks it over to Brian Keel, but the Tides can't convert. Well, both teams taking a lot of chances right now with their passes. Well, probably, it, it's tough for a coach to really sit on his hands when you've got full court passes like this. That's really not a, a, a pass right there that a coach wants to see, that interior pass across the lane. But if he's open, they're going to go for it. It's a 10-point game, 21 to 11. As Ryan Cowden can't handle the bullet pass by Ryan Allen. Not a lot of touch on these passes right now. I think uh, maybe adrenaline has a little bit to play in that. Just slightly. This is the biggest game they've ever played. Are you kidding? Jump ball situation. Alternating possession will go to Gig Harbor. We talked a little bit about it. What's it like? Is the adrenaline just so high at the start of the game that it keeps pumping you up, or do you feel a letdown around the middle of the second quarter? Well, I think teams like this, they, they've come out obviously to get to where they are. They come out and play with emotion every night. But when you're in a state championship game, this is probably the most people they've ever played in front of. You really come out and burn it up quick. There's a lull probably two or three minutes into the game, and then you settle down and start to relax. And we saw Lyle McIntosh took those guys out at a key point in the game, brought them back in, and now they're producing. Turnover there will give the ball to West Valley, and it's a 10-point game. All of a sudden, this game looked like it was going to be a huge blowout, but West Valley taking advantage of three recent turnovers by Gig Harbor after West Valley had turned it over well, that's, a lot early. That's what West Valley does. They're going to lull you to sleep a little bit on the offensive end, maybe create some unforced turnovers, come back down and pound it inside. They'll get back in this game. i got a lot of confidence in this team after watching them against O'Day. Ryan Allen will handle the entry pass for the West Valley Rams. Takes it way up top to Jeremy Johnson, and Johnson will run the show. Allen in the corner working against Brian Keel. Drives baseline, gets it to Johnson. Double pump, nice fake. Leaving a wide open shot for Taggart, but it rims out. Bennett's hurt, John. He just came down on somebody's foot inside, and he is really struggling to get up the court. Didn't even see that pass. 
And the official with a heads up call saying nobody has the advantage. Let's get the player that's hurt off the floor. Yeah, that's a very intelligent play right there by Paul Henderson. Uh, just to call officials timeout, get him off the court before anything else serious happens to him. You can see he's got a brace on that foot already. Hopefully we'll see him back in the game. It may be his other foot. This is Max Handgardner driving to the baseline. Picked up as oh, West Valley is. I think they missed one. That looked like a double to me. Long three-point attempt. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Max Gardner. Matt Gardner pulls it in, and it's 24-11. The Tides get a little bit of a jump on that one. I'd say Matt Gardner's got the uh, dark green light to shoot that. Working on the inside, McLaughlin out for the three-point attempt once, twice, bounces out for Ryan Allen. Gig Harbor all over the boards. Well, Brian Keel has done a nice job so far of, of keeping Brian McLaughlin off the boards. Gardner keeps it from backcourt. Scholl. Pretty baseline jumper by Mike Schmidt. I'll tell you what, this Gig Harbor squad's got uh, quite a few weapons. Schmidt with his first two points of the night, 26 to 11. The Tides lead. Nice drive. McLaughlin hanging tough on the inside. Of the 13 points scored by the West Valley Rams, eight of them belong to Brian McLaughlin. And I think probably all eight of those have been feeds from Jeremy Johnson. He really looks for the big man. Schmidt nice tried the three, watch the counterattack. They've got numbers. And McLaughlin able to put it in on the lay-in. 10 points for the 6'6 senior center. Three-point attempt on the other side. Rims off for Handgardner. Look at how active McLaughlin is inside. Driving in, Brian Keel fouled on the way in. And we haven't seen an awful lot of fouls. We're about to halftime, and only seven fouls have been committed by both teams. Well, I'll tell you, I think that's a testament to two things. Number one, they're playing clean. Number two, the officials are doing a nice job of letting the players play. Now, this is clearly a foul. It's just they're, they're going after the ball. Keel goes up strong, gets hacked on the arm. I think the officials are doing a nice job of letting the inside play go a little bit early. Now, you'll see at the end of the game, they'll tighten up a little bit if this is a close one. But uh, right now, they're letting these guys get a good sweat. Keel, one for two from the line, missed his only previous opportunity back trying to convert a three-point play. 27 to 15, make it 28 as he goes two for two on that visit to the charity stripe. We've got one minute to play in the first half. Cowden to Allen to Taggart. Taggart drives in, looked to get it to O'Connor, but too many tied players in the way. Tried to force that one. He got in, it was a nice ID. He was looking for the dump down. Just got in a position where the tides dropped down and really collapsed on him and cut off all his options. And as West Valley prepares to inbound the ball, Justin Bennett back into the game. The ankle seems to be okay. Quick inbounds pass, nice heads up play, didn't convert. Jeremy Johnson gets the rebound, rolls it out to Ryan Allen. And 39 seconds remain on the game clock in the first half. West Valley would love to have a bucket to give him a little bit momentum. High arcing shot will not Look go for Look at O'Connor go after that. Is that called following your shot? I do believe so. Uh, <laughs> that was following with a vengeance. Possession arrow in favor. Watch this. Right here. He knows this is going to come off. First guy to the ball. <laughs> Just about ran over our cameraman down there. Battle for the basketball as once again it was O'Connor fighting for the deuce. He's fouled on the way up. And Justin Bennett will be called with a foul. For Bennett, that's his first team foul, number four. And to the line will go Nathan O'Connor, a 6'6 senior center, had eight rebounds last night in the semifinal victory over O'Day. First free throw is good. The thing I like about Nathan O'Connor after watching him now in the second game is he really knows his role on the floor. He knows he's not a primary scorer, but he'll take him when he can get him. But you can see he's always around the glass. He's back in the play right here. Three West Valley players surrounded 
Brian Keel, and Keel draws the foul. The foul charged against West Valley's 32, Ryan Cowden, his second team's fourth. Here Keel does a nice job of getting in there. Strong player, but when you've got three guys surrounding you, tough to hang on to it. Full court pressure being put on by the Rams. 19 seconds to go in the first half, and Sam Scholl will bring it down against Jeremy Johnson. The trap is on. This but be wide a open, hello. Justin Bennett, the hoop and the harm, and a lot of motivation going on right there. Well, I thought he was going to go up and throw that one down. West Valley player came over and got in front of him right at the last second, but this is great ball movement right there. You can see Schmidt sees Bennett right out of the corner of his eye. Bennett goes up strong and finishes the play. That's the one thing, if any high school players out there watching this game, the one thing you want to do is when you go strong to the hole, finish. Keep your head up because this is what this is the reward right here. The three-point play. A three-point play for the 73% free throw shooter. Nine seconds to go in the first half. 31 to 16. West Valley with one last chance in the half. Johnson brings it all the way down, stops, pops, around and out, ripping down the rebound, Justin Bennett, and that will do it for the first half of play in the WIAA US Bank State Basketball Championships on the AA level. In the boys' division, it's 31-16. The tide's rolling on Prime Sports. at the Tacoma Dome halftime of the boys state championship matchup in the double-a level the gig harbor tides with a 31 16 lead over the West Valley Rams John Horton along with Ryan Drew and West Valley struggling a little bit in half number one well absolutely the only guy that's not struggling is Brian McLaughlin at this point he's had a superb first half his teammates are doing a nice job of finding him they're gonna need to do that in the second half but some other people need to get involved Let's take a look at Brian McLaughlin as we take a look at the first half highlights. The West Valley Rams, this is the only bright spot so far. That's a great dish. He goes up strong. Unfortunately, West Valley not shooting well with the exception of McLaughlin. Like I say, some other people need to get involved. They need to get some all-around scoring. That is all the scoring. McLaughlin with 10, only three other players contributing to the West Valley scoring. Let's flip it over to the other side, Gig Harbor now. Reeling in the threes. I'm telling you, Matt Gardner doing his best imitation of uh, Jimmy Chipwood and uh, you being his cousin Ollie. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this guy is not afraid to shoot it. Matt Gardner with the three threes. Brian Keel with six points. Sam Scholl has a three along with Max Hangardner. Justin Bennett, the big guy in there with five. First half numbers, take a look at the disparity in the three points. Absolutely, I think, well, you got the three points here, but I think the biggest disparity is a 24% shooting from West Valley. McLaughlin's probably five for seven, which means the rest of the team has combined two for 22. Will West Valley be able to come back and turn back the tides? Second half action coming up on Prime Sports. back at the Tacoma Dome getting ready for the second half of action. Gig Harbor with a 31 to 16 lead thanks to an awful lot of threes for the Tides. Same starting five for both teams as we start the second half of play. Gig Harbor with a ball to open play. Sam Scholl barely avoiding the backcourt violation. Mike Schmidt tries the three to open up the half. It's fitting that after that first half they come out with a three. West Valley leading in the rebounding category, however, that was part of the key to their victory against O'Day. Well, I think a big part of that is uh, the, the hard work of Nathan O'Connor and Brian McLaughlin. Both of them working the glass very nicely. Brian Allen apparently must have heard the three-point pep talk you were giving at halftime. Tried one for West Valley, and it was good. 31 to 19 the score. Tough play in the low post as Justin Bennett gets fouled on his way up. There was a repeat of the move that Keel made in the first half to begin the game. He just couldn't get this one to go. Keeps his head up nicely. Bennett comes in and just grabs that away from everybody. 
forces his way inside, clearly got hammered. So Bennett to the free throw line on the tournament, 12 of 16. That is a pretty tough. I'll tell you, when you've got a big man that can shoot the free throws, it really puts you in a nice position because you know he's going to get, you know he's going to get hacked inside. He goes to the, he goes to the line and makes these free throws. As a team, really puts you on top. A pair of free throws gives him seven on the night, 33 to 19. Long pass for McLaughlin. I'll tell you one thing Geek Harper is doing is they're doing a nice job of getting the ball in the hands of the West Valley players who are not real creators. McLaughlin trying to create something here. I think he picked up his dribble, realized I got to jump a long way if I'm going to make this into a layup. If Gick Harbor can continue to get the ball into guys' hands like McLaughlin by forcing Jeremy Johnson to give it up, that's going to be better for them in the second half. The foul charged against Sam Scholl to the line. Brian McLaughlin, 11 points now. He's only gone to the line six times in the entire tournament. That's a low number for a big man. Well, surprising as physical as he is, I think probably he's just clearing people out of there to the point where they just don't even want to get near him. You want to rumble with that guy down low? I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> of course, I'm not much of a rumble. Justin Bennett is. He'll take it over to Scholl. Kicks it into Keel. Pretty move. Right off the glass and in. I'll tell you what, Brian Keel is as good as I've seen at this tournament of taking the ball in, keeping his head up, and finishing the play. Jeremy Johnson a little too anxious on that pass. Here, just watch that one go over his head. <laughs> If you're a West Valley fan, one thing to keep in mind, two of the three games they came back and took over in the fourth quarter to win it. Don't count them out of this one. It's only a 14-point game. Well, they've seen this position before, and they're probably, uh, they're probably not worried at this point. Robins up top the show. Nice Justin move. Justin Bennett, the spin move. Yeah, nice spin, very patient inside. He felt the guy on his hip and then rolled to where he wasn't. Nine for the senior postman. Jeremy Johnson working against the zone. They're daring him to shoot the three. Brian Allen fakes the three, takes it inside. Pretty pass to Brian McLaughlin. And McLaughlin of the 23 points that West Valley has scored, he's got 14 of them. Well, I tell you, I don't understand why Gig Harbor is giving Brian McLaughlin that open lane inside. They're really not pressuring him. I would be fronting him, keeping the ball out of his hands, because he's the only one that's done anything up until this point. Schmidt. This is Scholl going against Jeremy Johnson. Great defense by Johnson, but he gives up the baseline. That's a good Schmidt. matchup. Johnson and Scholl is a super matchup. Mike Schmidt, he'll drive baseline on Allen. Allen called for the reach in, wave off the basket, and it'll be possession for Gig Harbor as Ryan Allen picks up the foul. Team foul number two. Good play by Schmidt, takes it with the right. Allen right there, clearly with the reach. Rather have the reach before he gets to the basket, keep him from getting those free throws. Good foul by Ryan Allen, he knew he was beat. Good look at Mike Schmidt, and there's the coach, Von Anchetta. His defensive philosophy hasn't quite worked on the threes, but last night, O'Day wasn't putting up that many threes. They were trying to power it in the middle. Well, Ron Anchetta's got a philosophy, and that is we prepare for everybody in practice and for every situation. Now, in the state tournament, you don't have days in between to prepare for anybody, so this is he's really got to come out and wing it. On the far side, Kevin Cure. Oh, that was a long pass. Those are picked off a lot of times. There's Allen. Inside McLaughlin. Turn around, Jay. Off the front iron. Battle for the rebound. Nathan O'Connor called for over the back. Big man like that's going to pick up some cheap fouls, such as that over the back call, only for being aggressive. As a coach, you'd rather have that than a big man who's not going after the ball. O'Connor picking up his third personal. 
West Valley has another big man, senior center John Everett, that can come in to replace O'Connor. I'll tell you what, Scholl really does a nice job of controlling the tempo of the offense. Let's these guys set up, he's not in a hurry. It's key to a good point guard. Off the turnover, Jeremy Johnson for West Valley. Allen over to Cure. Kevin Cure very quietly gets some good assists for this West Valley team. That's not where you want McLaughlin to have the ball. You gotta get him the ball in the interior. You don't want him out around 12, 13 feet. Right there, perfect. Take it high, drop it low, put it in for two. Good interior passing right there, O'Connor. Nice look, dump down. If the two big men can work like that with each other, really makes it difficult on Gig Harbor because they don't, they can't match up size-wise with the two taller players. Three-point attempt around and out by Max Hamgardner. Look at Gardner, look at O'Connor get on the boards right there. Bennett was lucky not to pick up the foul. Jeremy Johnson with the opportunity. They'd like to pull it within 10. Allen will try to make it a nine-point game. It won't go. And West Valley will retain possession as Justin Bennett, the last player to hit it. Max Gardner, the Mad Bomber, back into the game for the Tides. He'll replace Brian Keel. I'd like to see the odds in Vegas uh, of what his first shot opportunity is going to be. Think it's a three? I'm, I'm calling the bookie. <laughs> Now, West Seattle needs to get a good possession here. They're, they could get this down to 10 or even 9 with a three-point shot. That's going to give them a lot of momentum going into the fourth quarter. West Valley controlling Jeremy Johnson. Far side. Taggart trying the three, slapped away by Mike Schmidt. And Mike Schmidt, probably the most intense player on the Gig Harbor Tides. He put a pick on one of the players from Linden last night that actually sent him into about the third row. Well, you can see on that replay right there, I don't know what he's gonna complain just because that's the nature of most players. But uh, clearly, Beat had to spin around just to catch up and then tried to eliminate any kind of a shot. He's definitely leading in uh, sweat per minute. That's a stat I didn't know was kept. Taggart, two for two from the line. Cool. No sweat there. It's a 10-point game. Watch think, out for West Valley. I actually think our official stats crew has that somewhere. These guys are meticulous. Special thanks to them for providing statistical services this week. They did an awful lot of homework for us. Well, Matt Gardner, surprise, surprise, surprise. Three-point bucket. That's your ticket, you have a winner. Inside, Taggart tried to power it up, and Mike Schmidt is there for the block. You know, the thing that surprises me, John, is that West Valley knows Gardner's going to take a three-point shot. Why not get out on him? There's just a good look by Johnson. Looked like a clean block. Schmidt just not having a lot of luck uh, convincing the referees that uh, he's blocked those cleanly. Schmidt with his second foul, team foul number two. 2.19 to go in the quarter. West Valley of Yakima down by 13. The Tides dropping back into the zone. That's an open invitation for a three. You don't see, other than Ryan Allen, you don't see a lot of players for West Valley taking that three-point shot. Nice hustle by Jeremy Johnson, preventing the turnover. Yeah, Inside, almost. Taggart tried to get his own rebound. Hustling play by Cure going in there and the reach-in foul on the hold. Called against 22, Max Gardner. And the Tide fans express their opinions. West Valley at... Uh, well, that's a tough call for an official to make, especially being in the position he was in. He can't really see the type of contact it was, but a lot of bumping and grinding going on down there. Seen a lot more physical play at this point in the game. I think uh, West Valley realizes 
Really, there's only about nine minutes and 47 seconds. Actually, that's exactly what's left in the game, and uh, they need to get on the ball. Johnson to handle the entry pass. Cure will bring it out top. Tied still in their zone defense. Ryan Cowden into the game. He'll take a three if it's open. Taggart with a bounce pass to Johnson. McLaughlin drives baseline. Dipsy do that won't go. And over the back of the call against Brian McLaughlin. Well, McLaughlin tried to throw a little artificial flavor into that shot, and that's not his game. He needs, he needs to get the ball inside. Here you see him. There's the sugar on the shot. Can't get it to go. That's not his game. He needs to get the ball in a position where he can just square up, drop it into the hole. The best flavor on that shot would have been vanilla. He was making it tutti frutti, unfortunately. 40 to 27, still a 13 point game. Both teams having trouble scoring here in the recent moments. West Valley's defense is really forcing some errors that Gig Harbor wasn't making earlier. Well, this is a good play. This is, a good, this is very good for Ron Anchetti. He's gonna put some pressure on Gig Harbor right now in the front court, see if he can't get some needless turnovers. Good look at the coach of the West Valley Rams. A lot of the papers mentioning that this is the first time in recent memory that a team from Seattle has not been in the finals. A team from Yakima and a team from Gig Harbor representing the state in the AA championship here. One minute to go in the quarter. West Valley just looking for the right shot. This is Taggart driving in, loose ball. Somehow gets it to Cowden, Cowden spins away. Still a loose ball, but that time it goes out of bounds as diving for it was Brian Keel. Nice hustle by the senior forward. Keel's a workhorse. This guy brings his lunch pail and his hard hat to every game. You can tell he's really giving it all out on the court. Aaron Amadon in the game to replace Sam Scholl. Amadon comes in a lot of times, so Lyle McIntosh can give one of his players a break. Good role player as he, you don't lose anything when he goes out there. Sure, well that's a key to a, to a real quality role player is that they can come in, not, not make a lot of turnovers. He's gonna produce if he can, but the big thing is you don't want the loss of production. Obviously he's a player that like Lyle McIntosh can count on. West Valley really hanging back, looking for the right shot, down by 13. And Allen takes the 15-foot jumper. That's the right shot in that case. Well, these guys just aren't a three-point shooting team, John, so I think it's difficult for them to force themselves into being that type of team, especially when they're down. Keel turn around. Jay catches rim, and a foul called over the back. Jeremy Johnson tagged with the personal. Well, I think uh, Bob Rose saw something there I didn't. I don't know how... Uh, the smallest guy on the floor goes over anybody's back. I think that was a nice hustle play by Jeremy Johnson. Anytime a little guy can go in there and grab a rebound like that, that's, uh, he's working hard. And the foul whistled on Ryan Cowden in the battle of 32s. Cowden, the senior guard. The foul called against Cowden. That is his third, and 16 seconds remain in the quarter. 16 foul against West Valley, so King Harbor will be shooting. Three point attempt. Good! Mike Schmidt nails the three. They got a lot of weapons from that three point line, John. Awfully tough to single out one guy. One second to go, the tap won't go, and we go to the final quarter of play. Gig Harbor with a 43 to 29 lead. One quarter to go for the AA State Championship of Basketball on Prime Sports. Getting set for the fourth quarter of play, Gig Harbor with the 43-29 lead. 
Prime Sports brings you the best in collegiate sporting events. Tomorrow night at 6.30, it's the NAIA Division II Basketball Championship live from Napa, Idaho. Division II Basketball at its best tomorrow night at 6.30 on Prime Sports. Fourth quarter, Gig Harbor controls it. But remember, West Valley has used the fourth quarter, a dominating fourth quarter, to win two out of their three games. They need to get something going right here. They need to create some different types of action than they have in the past. I think they're going to need to force the ball inside, maybe kick back out and start taking some three-pointers that they haven't taken up until this point. Jeremy Johnson to run the show. Gig Harbor still in that very successful zone defense. Well, Not really only have they kept West Valley from scoring, they've kept them from shooting. Watch how they shift. It's really more of a matchup zone. That's good hustle down there. Really what it is, it's a matchup zone designed to, to prevent the three-point shot. Now what they've done is they've cut off any kind of uh, penetration or uh, looks inside that West Valley might have. A player that's a very quiet, Brian McLaughlin. We haven't seen anything out of him in about the last four minutes. But when your players on the perimeter can't see over the defender because they're in their face the whole game, it's difficult to get the ball inside. McLaughlin really can't step out and challenge anybody with a three-point shot or even an outside shot from 15 feet. That's just not his game. West Valley players looking to pass. None of them are looking to shoot, it seems. There's Ryan Allen. Inside, there's the power move. McLaughlin tries to follow it up. Can't hold on to the basketball, and he's fouled. He might have jammed his finger. That looks like it's already been jammed. Sam Scholl, there's a look of determination on a guy who could very well be the MVP of this tournament. Here's McLaughlin. This is why he's so tough. Goes up strong, hits the bottom of the board, and then gets uh, smacked on the hand. I think Scholl, that's more of a look of frustration than it is in he knows he fouled it. Scholl with his third personal. Second attempt for McLaughlin is good. I'll tell you, as solid a player as McLaughlin is, and as much as they look to him, a player who's making two pointers at this point is not going to get him back in the game. They need somebody who can stroke the three. Schmidt on the hustle. McLaughlin on the foul. I think with a player like Scholl, who sees the floor so well, it's tough to, uh, you can see right there, he just looks up the court and gets Schmidt. McLaughlin, a real gutsy play to get back and, and uh, stop an easy layup. But trying to pressure West Valley full court is going to be, or West Valley trying to pressure Gig Harbor full court is going to be difficult because Gig Harbor sees the floor so well. They're immediately going to look down the court for the easy bucket. Gig Harbor into the bonus situation. This is a two-shot foul, however. Two for Mike Schmidt. He misses the first. Schmidt is a 75% free throw shooter in the tournament. It's one of two there. 44-30 and West Valley trying to push the ball up. Great look. McLaughlin fade away. Jumper bounces twice, comes off. And what a determined effort by Matt Gardner holding on to the ball. And they're going to call a jump ball. The way he toppled, I thought there was going to be a foul. Well, he bounced back up pretty quick for a guy that goes down hard. Here's McLaughlin missing the J. Gardner goes vertical and then horizontal. Alternating position gives it to Gig Harbor. 6.34 to go in regulation. We say that because we've seen so many overtimes. Right you take a look at the three-point shooting, John. You can see why Gig Harbor has such a commanding lead. They've just been able to, I mean, that's over 50% shooting compared to West, uh, West Valley. Really, the only shooter there has been uh, Ryan Allen. Somewhat a controversial sideline call. Fans lobbying from both sides of the Tacoma Dome. Great crowd here under the largest wooden roof in the world. Kevin Calabro called it the woodshed on more than one occasion. And a three-pointer Cadillac Devlin Schmidt by Matt Gardner. I'll tell you what, I don't think there's any question who uh, my MVP of this game would be. It's the smooth shooting Gardner. Brandon Taggart 
Long pass to Ryan Allen. McLaughlin shoots, does not get the roll. Hey, McLaughlin's the only player looking for a shot. Well, I, he is, but he's not looking for the types of shots that he normally takes. And that's what's hurting West Valley right now is when Brian McLaughlin is forced into taking 17-foot jumpers to get your team back in the game. Things aren't going well. Mike Schmidt goes in challenging Nathan O'Connor, who picks up his fourth foul. And a timeout is called by the West Valley Rams. Boy, you can see Gartner just really sets up nicely. He's not in a hurry. He reminds me a lot of Michael Cooper in his heyday. When Magic used to look, throw the no-look, Coop would take about four or five seconds just to make sure his feet were behind the line. Gartner's a lot the same way. He's not a tremendous leaper on that shot, but you don't have to be. He's just spotting up and burying it. One thing the tournament director, Corky Frady, told me about this particular team, coached by Lyle McIntosh, probably the most polite team and the classiest team in the tournament. They even clean up their locker room after they're finished with it. I don't know of any teams that do that. I'll tell you what, you know, we kind of laugh about yeah. that, but from a from getting to the state tournament from that standpoint it really plays a big part with the officials because the officials talk to each other they've got post-game pre-game meetings and they're all probably saying to each other you know what this kicking harbor team has got a lot of class probably i'd say a lot of calls are going to go their way just because these these, these officials like them one other thing that quirky also imparted about that. They said the thank you note after the tournament. Thanks for letting us play in this tournament. That is a class act. Well, I'll tell you, you're quoting Corky an awful lot. I don't I don't know if he deserves this much credit. I have to pay him off for all the coach he's got me during the game. 48 to 30. Long pass for West Valley and the Gig Harbor Tides are feeling it. They just look frustrated to me, John. They're talking to each other. They, they, they just look disoriented on the court. We've been handed the all-tournament team, which is voted coming into the game. And Sam Scholl of Gig Harbor and Brian McLaughlin of West Valley are representatives here during the all, representing all four games that they've played. Nathan O'Connor picks up his first field goal of the night. Here's a big man, 6-6. It takes him the fourth quarter to get his first field goal. He doesn't shoot it that much. Doesn't take a lot of shots. He's a consummate inside role player. Knows what he has to do on the court. Big Harbor just has to be disciplined, and they've got this one well on hand. Jeremy Johnson with a reach in because West Valley will send Gig Harbor to the free throw line after every foul now. Well, I'll tell you, if the roles were reversed and West Valley were up by 16 with five minutes left, I don't think we could call it in yet, the way that they shoot the three-point shot. But West Valley really doesn't have a three-point shooter like a Gartner or a Scholl or a Schmidt for that matter. They just have so many weapons that West Valley doesn't have. Scholl misses the one-on-one and one opportunity. We're under five minutes to go in the game for the state championship. Gig Harbor with a 16-point lead. Nice pump fake by Johnson right there. Pretty shot by Johnson, too. He's a gutsy player. We saw him yesterday. He was playing with a real sore ankle. I'm sure his ankle is sore today, but uh, playing against Reggie Ball all day and guarding him, that's not an easy task. And a foul called. As you can see, the, the Gig Harbor Tides, really a team very much together. A lot of high fives, a lot of side fives, talking to each other throughout the entire game, keeping each other up. They've got an assistant coach that I think may have lost his voice during game number one. Somehow something's left during game number four. I don't know how anything will be left at the end of next week, let alone tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing I like about this Gig Harbor team is when a player comes off the floor, you can see all their players stand up congratulating when he comes off. That's just a team that's together. Matt Gardner taking a seat. Five three-pointers on the night. 50 to 34. 
Gig Harbor. Jeremy Johnson pulls the trigger. It won't go. You can tell, though, he's not comfortable taking that shot. It was almost like he had to force himself to shoot it. They're going to have to force up some shots, and that one will work. Kevin Cure with the three ball. They get another three like that, John. It's a 10-point ball game. We're not out of this one yet. But they have to shoot. That's the key. Max Hangar loses control. There's O'Connor right there with the hustle move. Here come the Rams. Jeremy Johnson, Ryan Allen for three. Rims it. Shoal loses control. Allen gets it back. Johnson drives in. Tapped in by Allen. You know, we joked about the perforated three-point line and the pro line being out there, but I'll tell you what. I think these players are legitimately confused as to which line they're supposed to be shooting from. We've seen time and time again Ryan Allen shooting from behind the pro line as well as some of the Gig Harbor players. Foul charge to Kevin Cure. His third. That's the tenth team foul against West Valley. That of significance because it's two free throws from here on in for Gig Harbor. Gig Harbor still has two fouls to give. Keel to the free throw line, misses the first. Yeah, Gig Harbor at 71% is a uh, fairly good free throw shooting team, too. I don't think uh, they're really a team that you're going to want to get on the line at the end of the game. Keel hits the second. It's a 51-39 game. And look at the hustle. Beautiful play by Garner. Picked up by Cowden. Tried to get it into O'Connor. Loses control of it. Sam Scholl, the last man to touch it. That's good hustle. That's what West Valley needs to continue to do is keep playing hard. They may find themselves back in this game with about uh, two minutes left. But they've got to shoot it. That's the key. They've been holding off just looking for the right shot. I'm surprised Johnson doesn't take more shots than he does. He really has more opportunities, I think, than he realizes. I think Ryan Allen has to be the key here. O'Connor inside has to go up strong. Instead, he's looking for the pass. Three-point attempt. Cure got it! I think they need to get the ball to Cure. That's two in a row. Let's get the ball to the guy with the hot hand. All of a sudden, it's a nine-point game. The pressure is working. Cowden oh. stolen away. Key play, Ryan Kill. That just hurts you as a coach when you get a turnover like that. Just to have a uh, guy throw it away. Cowden caught on the reach in. The ball handling by the senior guard, Max Handgardner, who will go to the line. Well, I like Cowden's hustle. I think when he gets a hold of the ball, though, he needs to be looking for Johnson to control the play. They're down nine with two minutes and 30 seconds left. They got a possession. They hit another three. It's a six-point game. To the line. Here's Cure with his second three. Splash. First free throw rims off for Max Standgardner. An 80% free throw shooter on the tournament. He hits the second. Four for Hand Gardner. It's a 10 point game with 232. Fasten your seatbelts. This could be fun. Well, I think Johnson needs to look for Cure right here. Maybe get the ball, look for him opposite. Get a little swing pass to him so he can get some breathing room for that three. Cowden loops it in for O'Connor, who puts it up strong and draws the foul. If you're going to put it into O'Connor, he better go up and try to draw the foul instead of looking to pop it outside. Well, I think one thing that surprises me right now is that Brian McLaughlin's not in the game. O'Connor does a nice job of not pushing off. Bennett just comes over his back. And that is a curious question. Why isn't McLaughlin? West Valley's got to make free throws at this point of the game. Here comes McLaughlin right now. He's about to check in. O'Connor misses it. Almost a key rebound by Ryan Allen. And I think West Valley is going to get the ball, and they indeed will. Here comes McLaughlin. So now, all of a sudden, that zone, which was keeping the players out, they've got McLaughlin on the inside. That's something that West Valley didn't have with an attack earlier. Well, I think what this is going to do, it's going to draw the Gig Harbor players inside. There's Cure. Give them the opportunity for the three, right? Sure. Ryan Allen 
losing his balance. Looked like he was about to tackle Sam Shaw there. Allen picks up his second, and Sam Shoal will go to the line. The shot that Sam Shoal hit last night at the buzzer was one of the most, as I mentioned earlier, most dramatic moments seen in tournament, tournament action. He hits the first free throw there. But not only did Sam Shoal have 13 points last night, seven for eight from the free throw line. He's missed two tonight. Well, I think West Valley got lucky on that play. McLaughlin's looking around. He did a nice job of selling that, but uh, the official with an early uh, Christmas gift there. Winning a state championship is Christmas, New Year's, and your birthday all rolled into one. Jeremy Johnson tries the three. What hustle by Max Handgarner. And timeout is called by the Gig Harbor Tides. With 1.49 to go, the possession arrow is in the favor of West Valley. Well, but I tell they you. Are far away from being into the bonus situation. I think at this point, uh, it doesn't really do West Valley any good to go out and foul. Because we're not in a one on one situation anymore. With 10 fouls, it's an automatic two shots. So if they're going to foul, they want to be careful that it's not an intentional foul. They need to get the ball back and start taking some risks from the outside. I think they need to get Cure on the outside, maybe have Johnson penetrate and dish back out, feed McLaughlin inside and wait for Gig Harbor to drop down and then kick the ball back out. they got to hit some threes at this point to get themselves back in. The next level from here is, of course, the collegiate level. And when you talk about college, you talk about the Washington State Cougars. Tuesday night, tune in at 10.30 as we bring you the latest edition of the Crimson and the Gray. Join host Bud Nemec and Carolina Herb as they profile student athletes, coaches, and the staff. The Crimson and the Gray, T Tuesday night. That's tomorrow night at 10.30 on Prime Sports. The Tides, one minute and 49 seconds away from a state championship if they can hold off the pesky West Valley Rams. Gardner will not get the bucket foul before the shot call on Ryan Allen. Well, I hardly recognize Gardner uh, taking a layup. I had to double check my spotting sheet, I'll admit it. Here is, uh, Here's a sight that we haven't seen much. Ryan uh, or Gardner taking the ball to the hole. Matt Gardner taking the ball to the hole. That is a sight we've seen. Uh, the ball going through the net for him. Free throw is good. He gets two because they called the foul before the shot. He'll still get two points. 17 points for Matt Gardner. West Valley has to go for it. What a swap by Max Hamgarner. Battle for the ball. And a foul is called. And look at Sam Scholl. Sam Scholl trying to calm his team down. Good drive there by Cure. Ant Gardner goes up with the uh, Tomahawk swat. A little frustration here by uh, Justin Bennett McLaughlin just trying to prevent him from getting any kind of a possession there. And both those players, obviously, uh, frustration on McLaughlin's part. And that is his fourth personal foul. And he will take a seat. 126 to go. Keel to the line for two. First one is in. with eight points, excuse me, 10 points on the game. Johnson just pushes it down, looking for the shot. Allen for three, yes! And that's what they need to do right there. Penetration, penetrate, dish back out for the three. But this foul situation and the penalty with two free throws for every foul is going to be a very difficult situation for 
the West Valley Rams well, to you take climb a look, out of. Take a look at the foul situation. Gig Harbor already in the bonus. West Valley with only, uh, or Gig Harbor with only five team fouls. West Valley's a long way from going to the free throw line. And Gardner Mills, the first of the pair. 57-45. Thirteen point lead for Gig Harbor as we come down the home stretch. Johnson drives, blocked away by Gardner. Oh, what a swap by Bennett. Long shot on the follow up taken by Kevin Cure. And I believe that Gig Harbor starting to feel the emotion of a state championship. Well, that was a uh, fairly impressive stuff by Bennett. He was in nice position down there. Johnson goes up, can't get it up. How about a Spalding sandwich there, Cure? Ben McMurray, who would check in the game, picks up his first foul. Andy Folletto coming in, along with Chris Thorson. And Will Perry, who has not played one moment of the state championship, will check in. So, Rod and Jetta emptying the bench, wanting to make sure all his players get an opportunity to play in the state championship. And Ryan Allen will go to the bench. A great game for him. He had a lot of heart trying to keep his team in it with those key threes. He takes a seat with 12 points. Yeah, he plays with a lot of emotion throughout the tournament. Real gutsy player. Free throw is good by Justin Bennett. We're into the final minute, the AA state championship. West Valley will maintain possession. And here's where the guys off the bench want to look to score whenever they can. Long shot by Perry. I'm going to get those J's up. 41 seconds to go and a foul called. Sending Max Ham Gardner to the line and there's Lyle McIntosh. His team is 40 seconds away from a state championship. looking for their first ever state championship in boys double A basketball. Ham Gardner hits the free throw. And time to bring in the troops as the subs get ready to come in for the Gig Harbor Ties. 30 seconds to go. the tides so they can get their subs in. I'll tell you what, that's a very unselfish play right there by Scholl. Nobody was telling him to call the T.O. He looked over to the bench, saw five guys waiting to come in. He called the smart timeout. That's a that's a very, very unselfish play. And that's another another reason why Gig Harbor is so tough. They've got a very heady, intelligent point guard. Take a look at one very happy huddle. The chance of we're number one starting already. These are the sights and sounds of a state title for Gig Harbor. It's a and a disappointed bunch. Dejected West Valley bunch. They played with a lot of heart. I'll tell you what, they uh, a lot of people didn't even have them pick to go past O'Day. And a confirmation, Sam Scholl is the MVP of the state championship tournament. Well deserved. spot the players as they come in. This is Chris Thorson, for correction, Ryan Johnson. Gig Harbors, 15 seconds away from a win. Andy Folletto. Perry tries it, it won't go. 
Seven seconds to go for Gig Harbor. Look at the assignment on the bench. The Gig Harbor Tides are the 1996 AA state champions. moment for a special bunch of kids. They may be quite sad right now, but when they go back and realize what they've accomplished, they've got a lot to be proud of. The Gig Harbor Tides have won the 1996 Double A Boys Basketball Championship of the State of Washington. McIntosh with Gig Harbor's first state championship win. We'll be back to wrap up the entire day of action when we return on Prime Sports. The Gig Harbor Tides, by virtue of a 60 to 45 win over the West Valley Rams, have won the 1996 boys double-a state championship and standing by with a victorious coach Lyle McIntosh is Ryan Drew. Ryan? I'm here with coach Lyle McIntosh obviously a great victory with as many seniors as you have on your team what does this mean to you as a team? Oh, it means so much to me because and to the kids because these kids have been together since sixth grade and have talked about it and worked towards it in the last couple years they've been here at state we've been one and two they've, their goal was to win a game on Saturday and they picked the right one to win. Fantastic win for you guys congratulations on a great year let's go back to you Thank you, Ryan. There's a happy coach and a happy bunch of Gig Harbor Tides players. Their seniors came through. The Gig Harbor Tides are the 1996 State Double-A Boys Basketball Champions. Congratulations to them, as well as the Blanchett Braves, the champions of the girls Double-A. Well, that will wrap it up from here for our producer, Todd Calamar, our director, Carl Malone, and my color commentator, Ryan Drew. This is John Horton. Our final score for tonight's AA championship game in the boys' division. 60-45, to 45, Kick Harbor wins the championship. Next on Prime Sports, it's the Press Box. Good night, everybody, from the Tacoma Dome.